Hello and welcome to the good old days of radio show. This is John Tefteller, your host. It's Tuesday. And Tuesday means comedy, drama, or variety. I decided to pick comedy again, because we've been a little lacking on comedy over the, the course of the show, but we're going to make up for it, so just have to get those comedy shows that are just right for a, a modern audience. Today we have a episode of the Stan Freeberg Show. I played the very first episode from this series some weeks back, and now it's time for episode number two. Stan Freeberg was probably the greatest satirist of the 50s and 60s. He made fun of all kinds of things in a very gentle and humorous manner. And CBS Radio gave him a radio show right at the very tail end of what was network radio, 1957. There were shows until 1961, 62, but very limited. This was kind of a last gasp, and it was a summer series, so it kind of got Buried in the summer, but even with that, uh, Freeberg shines through and comes comes forward with some great comedy, and they're very fun to listen to. You'll recognize a number of the other voices in the shows as great cartoon characters from your childhood: Dawes Butler, June Foray. All these people did great uh, cartoon voices in the fifties and sixties and into the seventies. And Stan Freeberg uh, continued after this radio show to do comedy albums for Capitol, as well as all kinds of award-winning commercials for all kinds of things that were very funny and very well done. So, from July 21st, 1957, CBS Radio, here is the second show of the Stan Freeberg Show. John! I beg your pardon. Uh, excuse me, madam. Marcia. Uh, oh, pardon me, sir. Uh, this is the Stan Freeberg Show, and I have to... Uh, John! You... Yes, you, you said that. Uh, I'm Stan Freeberg. I... Uh... Marcia. I know you two people have a lot to say to each other, but uh, I have to start John? my... Start my show. Uh, Marcia. Uh, well, uh, forgive me if I seem to close the door on John. you. John! Yeah, well, I hate to interrupt those nice people, but you know how it is. Hit it, Billy May. This is the second show of a series of a brand new radio series. The CBS Radio Network presents The Stan Freeberg Show. With the music of Billy May. Plus the songs of Peggy Taylor with Dawes Butler, June Ferre, Peter Leeds, and the Judd Conlon Rhythm Airs. No use to look for us on TV. Because in case you did not know, we're being brought to you on, brought to you on, brought to you on our ADI. In uh, keeping with the policy of the Stan Freeberg show, which goes everywhere, sees everything, does everyone, Mr. Freeberg has just completed a very dangerous assignment. Freeberg, I said to myself, for indeed that was my name. <laughs> Freeberg, why don't you get an interview with the abominable snowman? You mean, you mean to say that dreadful creature of the high Himalayas? The same. And you actually got an interview with one of these ape-like monsters. This tape will tell... The only previously recorded information on the abominable snowman comes from Dr. Hugo Sponk of Cornell University, who went high in the Himalayas to do research on the subject. The only thing the good doctor had to say about the abominable snowman was... Ah! Uh, now, we felt that this was not too informative... And CBS Radio felt it was below standard as far as broadcast quality was concerned. So I went up and got the interview myself. It went something like this. This is Stan Freeberg speaking high in the Himalaya Mountains in northern India. I'm standing next to this uh, particular uh, gentleman, uh, creature... Uh, just, uh, what is it, uh, you are there? A little of each, Stan, actually. <laughs> a little, uh, a little of each, that's right. 
I see. Then you are the abominable... Uh... Snowman, that's right. <laughs> oh, I never cared for that word abominable too much, Stan. You mind if I call you Stan? No, not at all. Well, I never cared for abominable, but it's the nearest word uh, translated from the original Hindustani, which was uh, abominuya mayo, <laughs> which means the hairy one with the big feet. <laughs> Yeah, I can see it lost something in the translation. I was noticing your... Uh... Noticing my sneakers there, were you? <laughs> Quite large. Yeah, what are they, about uh, 12? What, are you kidding? 12? They're size 23. <laughs> That's pretty big. Well, it's functional design, you know. <laughs> Have you ever tried to walk on snow with ballet slippers? <laughs> or roller skates? Well, yeah, don't you have a little bit of uh, trouble uh, buying them? I mean... Well, I just can't walk into any old store and buy them. No, I have them specially made up for me. Well, where, where, where do you get them? Well, when I don't have the chance to drop by Abercrombie & Fitch, uh, I send up to Spalding's. They make them up for me. <laughs> I, uh, I have them in four colors. Uh, the white, the red, uh, the pink, and the orange. I'm wearing the orange today. <laughs> Oh, that's very nice. Well, that's the particular ensemble I picked out today. Oh, it's not much of an ensemble, is it? I mean, it's just the shoes. Well, it's... It's an ensemble to me. <laughs> Some of us are, aren't too well off uh, as others. Well, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Oh, that's all right. It's all right? Yes, it is. Okay, okay, all right, all right, fine, fine. <laughs> Just, uh, what is it you do for a living? You, you terrorize the mountain? That's right. I uh, terrorize the mountain climbers who come up here. Uh, that is my trade, and I am proud of it. Is it uh, hard work? Uh, you have to do a lot of uh, training? Well, I don't think everybody can do it, you know. They don't have the hair for it, for one thing. <laughs> <laughs> or the sneakers. Say you're quite tall, you know. What, what are you, about the... Eight, nine feet? No, I measure in around ten and a half, buddy. Ten and a half feet tall? He, That's uh, pretty tall. You think I'm tall? You should see my brother. He jumped center for abominable state. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry I missed him. Uh, have you had a, a pretty good day's work today? No, it hasn't been too hard today so far, no. Mm -mm. You, uh, what was that again? Mm -mm. <laughs> you, uh, you done much uh, terrorizing? No, not too much today. Well, I wonder if you could uh, give us a demonstration before we sign off of whatever it is you do uh, to terrorize the mountain climbers, certainly. Well, uh, well what, do you, what would you like me to do? Well, just turn your back there and close your eyes. Close your little eyes, and I sort of uh, sneak up behind you and let fly with one. <laughs> let fly with one what? Never you mind, just turn your back. Well, I think I have a... Never mind, never mind. Just turn your back, please. No peeking. All right. Don't you open those eyes now. I won't. All right. I'll just sneak up behind you now. Tippy-toe. <laughs> Which is hard with my feet. <laughs> Here I come now. Yeah. Start there tonight, Stanley. <laughs> Say, that white hair is very becoming. <laughs> Sets off your ruddy complexion. Very nice. Gee, that was effective. Well, as I see, our time is up. Oh, that's a shame. Sure you don't have time for a quickie before you hit the pike? <laughs> no, I really don't. Well, if you'll forgive me, I gotta get back to work. I see a mountain climber over there by the edge. Well, nice meeting you. Nice meeting you, Stan. Nice to see a man happy in his work. <laughs> Thank you. And now one of the dramatic scenes we know you've been waiting for. The lights on the stage go down, leaving but one spotlight are in our announcer, Burnside Mantle. Thank you. Great moments in history. 
But what was the story behind those moments? Time is 1862. The place, a small upstairs room in a little house in Frederick, Maryland. An army in gray is moving into town. Moving, moving like a flowing flannel river. We hear a man who... All right. All right, Barbara Fritchie. Here's the flag. Now stick the old gray head out the window. You give me the money, then I'll stick the old gray head out the window. (laughs) So much for history. Outraged history lovers may write me care of CBS Radio, Hollywood, California. Stan. If you ladies and gentlemen could see her, you would know that that is the voice of Peggy Taylor. Thank you, Stan. Uh, Say that business about Barbara Fritchie, you don't believe it, do you? Oh, well, we know. We were just funning, you know. You were just what? Funning. That's what I thought you said. I do the best I can with the words I get, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I say this is a nice studio, you yeah, know? Yeah, it is kind of a nice studio, isn't it? CBS Radio has sort of turned our studio into a home away from home, as it were. Why, that's very nice now. But, you know, I've never seen a studio with rows of overstuffed chairs for the musicians like this. Yes, well, it's homey, you know. Oh, it sure is. Rugs on the floor and pictures on the wall and a big dog lying in front of the fireplace. That's Billy May. <laughs> Well, you know what fooled me was the stick in his mouth. That's the way he conducts. Ladies and gentlemen, Peggy Taylor. From a whip or will high up on a hill, they took a new note. Pushed it through a horn till it was worn into a blue note. Looking for a different tune One that they could croon As only they can They only had the rhythm so They started swaying to and fro They didn't know just what to do And that is how the blues Really began breeze in the trees singing weird melodies and they made that as a start of the blues then from a jail came the wail of a Ladies and gentlemen, still in line with our policy, the Stan Freeberg program is still going everywhere, seeing everything, doing everyone. Take it away, Field Mayor Leroy Strattel at Mount Rushmore, South Dakota, the scene of the great presidential statues. Field Man Leroy Strattel here at Mount Rushmore, South Dakota. 
Will you knock off the bird calls, please, Mrs. Prill? Oh, I beg your pardon. Yes. I'm standing in the shade of George Washington's nose, along with Mrs. Hagmeyer Prill, who you just heard from, a sculptress of Duluth, who is about to carve a new statue. Is that correct? I hope to kick a pig in the face. It's correct. <laughs> well, nothing I like better than a good old colloquial expression. Well, how'd you like a good old fat lip? <laughs> Yes. Well, Mrs. Prill, would you like to tell the folks uh, why you're such an unusual sculptress? Oh, yes. Just fill them well, in a little. I, uh, I carve statues out of a good many things. Such as? Oh, so paraffin wax lard, anything. So paraffin wax lard, eh? They can hear me. <laughs> well, uh, yes. Well, how did it start? How did it all start? Yes, well, I started carving little individual rosebuds out of soap for my dinner parties. Back in Grand Rapids, you know. Ah, uh, yes, I see. Well, everyone complimented me on them. Someone ate one, so I had to change my materials. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, he did froth pretty good, though. <laughs> All of a lather, eh? <laughs> yeah. Well, how did the idea for a big statue come about? Well, a friend of mine, Gladys Bomberger, you know her. No, I don't believe I do. Oh, well, she lives down the block. Yes. She's a lovely girl. I'm sure she is. We have to move right along. Yes, I hate her, but she's a lovely girl. Well, anyway, uh, she had this lawn tea, and I was asked to carve some little decoration. So one night it came to me in a veritable vision. Tiny miniature statues of Mary Margaret McBride carved out of oleo margarine. <laughs> oh, they certainly made a hit, if I do say so. Well, I'll bet they made a hit. I just said so. <laughs> Well, well that's... that's how the big idea came about. Yeah. I came to Mount Rushmore Memorial Committee, and here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Think of that, ladies and gentlemen, a 400-foot statue of Mary Margaret McBride carved entirely out of oleomargarine. <laughs> Gee, that's realistic. <laughs> <laughs> Are you planning any more? Well, I told you I was before we went on the air. Oh, yes, of course. And they were a grouping of three. Yes, Mary Margaret McBride, of course. Of course. Wyatt Earp and Fats Domino. <laughs> Great Americans all. Well, whoopsie daisy, I see the sun's coming out, so it's back to Hollywood. Whoopsie daisy is right, Leroy Straddle, and thank you, Mrs. Prill. Well, I like to think of Mrs. Prill, high on her scaffold there on Mount Rushmore, chipping and chopping away at the margarine of her 400-foot statue. Arrivederci, Mrs. Prill. But as must happen in all uh, variety shows, the scene must change. And we go from the lofty mountain to a quiet living room. Billy, uh, could you give us a little uh, lofty mountain to quiet living room music, please? <laughs> Oh, boy. Gee, honey, it's great to have an evening at home, huh? <laughs> Nothing to do but read, take it easy. Oh, I'll say. Boy. And we can use a nice, quiet evening. Yeah. Oh. Lucky for us, your mother broke her leg. <laughs> boy, I'll say. Well, and good thing, too, that Charlie Adams has the measles. Yeah, no canasta tonight. Mm, boy, this is for me. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Don't answer it. Let it ring. Let it ring tonight. Why don't they leave us alone? Look, at honey, no matter who it is, we're not going out. No, here. We're not going out. And don't invite them over. No. Don't tell, tell them we're sick. I'll just tell them we died. Hello? Hello, Max is delicatessen. This is Mrs. Snodgrass. No. Will you send up some? No, ma'am, you have a wrong oh, a number. A half a pound of salami, a half a pound Madam, of Taylor ham. Lady, I'm a trying to tell you. Pound of store cheese. Why? <laughs> I said you have a wrong number. Isn't this Max? Uh, no. Well, what number is this? This is Trafalgar 40598. Trafalgar 40598? Yes, that's right. Well, I want Trafalgar 45098. Well, this is Trafalgar 40598. Are you sure this isn't Trafalgar 45098, Max of Delicatessen? No, this is not Max of Delicatessen. I'm sorry. That's funny. I rang Trafalgar 45098. Well, you got a wrong number. Well, who was it, honey? Oh, some dame had a wrong number. Glad it wasn't for us. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't go out tonight to see Davy Crockett wrestle Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> Gee, I think my eardrum is busted. Oh, come well, on. Now, whoever it is, tell him to get lost. Right. Hello? Hello, Max is delicate. Oh, stop. This is Mrs. Snodgrass. Will you send over half a pound of salami? Lady, I told you before, you got the wrong number. Why? You got the wrong number. <laughs> what number is this? This is Trafalgar 40598. 
Yeah. You sure this isn't Trafalgar 45098? Look, lady, when I lie to you... Well, that's funny. I dialed Trafalgar 45098. Well, you must have made a mistake somewhere. I did not make a mistake. I dialed TR 45098. Well, you didn't get TR45098. You got TR40598. Yeah, but that's the wrong number. <laughs> that's what I've been telling you. Look, I've been calling Max's Delicatessen for three years. That number's always been Trafalgar45098. Look, lady, why don't you get the operator to get the number for you? I don't need to ask the operator. I know what the number is. Okay, okay. Gee. <laughs> An ear for an ear, I always say. Who was it? Same thing, the wrong number again. He had quite a long conversation. Yeah, was well, he cross-examined me. Well, I'm just glad it wasn't for us, You're anyway. You're not kidding. Me. Oh, no. Hello? This is the special operator. Is this Trafalgar 40598? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, indeedy, this is Trafalgar 40598. Just a moment, please. I have a call for you. Is your party... Hello, Max Delicatessen! Will you stop? <laughs> Wait a minute! I told you before this is not Max's Delicatessen! Is this Trafalgar 40598? Yes! Well, that's the number I want. Will you send over Wait a minute, you don't want Trafalgar 40598. You want Trafalgar 45098. How do you know what number I want? Because you told me so. You said you want Trafalgar 45098, you said. No, I don't. I want Trafalgar 40598. I asked the operator to get it. All right, she got it for you, but it ain't the is right... Is this Trafalgar 40598? Yes. Well, is Max there? No, Max isn't here. So where is he? <laughs> How do I know where Max is? I don't even know who Max is! Oh, well, you must be new there. <laughs> I am not new here. I am not new here. I have been living here for eight years. Well, honey, who is it? Who is it? That crazy dame with the wrong number. How how dare you say that? Ah, shut up! Oh, how dare you? Harry! Harry, some schnook at Max's delicatessen's and something. Oh, he is, is he, Hank? Give me that phone, I'll fix his wagon. Now, now dear, dear, don't lose your temper. Here, let me talk to now her. Now, listen here, you cheap salami slicer. <laughs> What's the idea of insulting my wife? I ought to come right over there and shove your puss in the liverwood. Oh! <laughs> Darling, what some man on the boat said he's going to shove my puss in liverwurst. Oh, he did, did he? Give me that phone. Listen here, you. What's the big idea insulting my wife? What's the idea insulting my wife? If your stupid wife would dial the right number, I wouldn't have to insult her. My stupid wife did dial the right number. <laughs> did not. She dialed Trafalgar 40598. What number is this? Trafalgar 40598. So it's the right number. <laughs> it is not the right number. She wants Max's delicatessen. Well, ain't this Max's delicatessen? No! Well, why did you say so? I didn't say so. I told your stupid wife. Now, listen, you crumb. You insult my stupid wife once more. <laughs> I'll come over there and punch you right in the nose. Yeah? You and who else? Me and my stupid wife. <laughs> Says you. Says you. My wife can lick your wife any day in a week. Honey, what did he say? What did he say? He said he punched me in the nose. Oh, yeah? That's what he said. Well, you just give me that phone. Oh, here, here. i just like to see you punch my husband in the nose. Oh, you think I couldn't do it, eh? Well, you just try it. I'll come over there and I'll punch you and your stupid wife in the nose. That's oh, funny, yeah? Baby. Nobody's going to punch my stupid wife in the nose unless it's me. <laughs> what'd he say? What'd he say? Yeah, it wasn't him. It was that big dumb ox of a wife of his. She said she's going to punch you in the nose. Oh, she did, did she? You give me that phone. Listen, you beat-up rag bag. I'd like to see you. Ah, go on. Your mother listens to Crazy Auto. <laughs> Stop arguing with him. Hang up the phone. I'm going to report you to the telephone company. I'm... Shh. Oh, God. Boy. Some people. <sighs> well, what's the use? Oh. I don't feel like reading. Well, I certainly don't. I don't feel like reading. God. But well, this book wasn't as good as I thought anyway. Yeah. Huh. Well? Well? Tell you what, let's call up the Johnsons and see what they're doing. Oh, okay. Sure. Gee, maybe they feel like some canasta. Huh? Yeah, maybe. We'll just call the Johnsons up here. Well, we'll do. Hello, Max's Delicatessen. <laughs> Well, 
let's see. We are looking backwards in the show here. We did the great moments in history. Um, Barbara Fritchie, we did the Mount Rushmore out of uh, Oleo Margarine. But uh, just in case there's anyone we haven't offended, perhaps this will tear it. I dream of genie with a light Hold it. Brown hair. Hold it, please. What are you doing? Okay, hold it, vapor girl. Am I gonna have trouble with you like I did in them last guys on Shaboom? How can the kids dance to that jazz? If they can't bop to it, they won't buy the record. You know that. Don't you know that? Yeah. yeah. You know that. Now we're gonna do rock and roll, Stephen Foster, all right, but we're gonna do a rock and roll. Three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, Jack Queen King. Rock. Genie. Genie with. Genie with the. Genie with the light. Genie with the light brown. Genie with the light brown wig rock. Pretty commercial, huh? I'll tell the world. Okay. Follow me now. Genie! That's the stuff. Genie with. Genie with the. My head is bending, Nelly Bly. The buckwheat cake is in her mouth. Honk, honk the alto. Tinnier, please. Never mind that Nick Lucas pick. Play it with this old Howdy Doody button. Say the difference. Now you're coming on. Now make it go. Daddy Adler, Daddy Adler. That's the stuff. Yeah, let's not overdo it, huh? Yeah, let's not wear out our welcome, huh? Beautiful dreamer. Wake, wake on to me. You guys, where are you getting your arrangements from? Abby Rents? You know what Confucius said? If they can't pop to it, bombs build. You want me to tear up your autograph pictures of Hunter Hancock? No! Well, then let's take Beautiful Dreamer again. Beautiful Dreamer! Way to the genie. Way down to the genie. Genie with. Camp Town Cats all dig this tune. All the loot out. Wind to run all night. Wind to run all day. Somebody bet on the bay. Any of you older folks hear your Stephen Foster favorites? Join in and sing right along with us, won't you? I like a one-eyed cat peeping at my old dog tray. I like a one-eyed cat peeping at my old dog tray. Well, it ain't the way he wrote it, but we sell more records this way. Down upon the genie. Genie with... Genie with the light brown. Don't stop popping it, just a two bar break. We no more sweet mama. No wait, no more two. 174 o'clock rock. We'll pop one more for my old Kentucky. Rebop, bop, you bop, a doop, bop, boop, bop, boop, boy. Masses in the cold, cold. Rebop, rebop, shabam, pop, the rip, boop, boop, you, you, pow, pow, chuck, kick, boom. Hey, you guys, I think this turned out better than the Kerry Jacobs Bond album we did last week. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, I see the time is up. We'll all be back next week with new padding on the walls here. Until next week, this is Stan Freeberg saying thank you for listening, God bless you, and good night. The Stan Freeberg Show is produced in Hollywood by Pete Barnum and is written by Stan Freeberg, Pete Barnum, and Jack Roach. With original songs by Stan Freeberg. Featuring the music of Billy May, Judd Pondman for the Mayors, and the songs of Peggy Taylor, with Dawes Butler, Peter Leeds, and June Frey. Also in the cast was Martin Miller, Dan Coverley speaking. Stay tuned for Robert Trout in the news to be followed on most of these same stations by The Mitch Miller Show.
Okay, the second show of the Stan Freeberg uh, series from 1957. A couple interesting things in this one that I don't know if too many people know what these are, but he mentions Barbara Fritchie and Frederick Maryland. He does it in a historical context, but what if unless you live in Frederick, Maryland, I don't know that you would know this, but Barbara Fritchie's is a very famous diner in Frederick, Maryland that record collector Joe Bussard uh, is seen in the film Desperate Man Blues. He goes to Barbara Fritchie's restaurant every um, morning for breakfast. It's now closed, but back in uh, all throughout his life and all throughout until about three years ago, um, that was a very, very famous diner in Frederick, Maryland. Now, how Stan Freeberg knew about that, I have no idea, because I don't think he was from Maryland. That's one interesting reference in there. They put that in there. Why, I don't know. The other one is in his rock and roll parody, and Stan Freeberg was very famous for doing parodies of 1950s rock and roll classics or taking old songs like I Dream of Genie" and turning them into rock and roll to make fun of the whole genre of rock and roll. In his I Dream of Genie" rock and roll parody, he mentions uh, tearing up your autographed pictures of Hunter Hancock. Now, if you lived in Los Angeles, you would know who Hunter Hancock was. But if you were into rock and roll and rhythm and blues radio, Hunter, Han Hunter Hancock was the big rock and roll R&B type DJ in Southern California in the late 50s. But this was CBS radio nationwide. Hunter Hancock was not nationwide. Nobody outside of Southern California would have known who he was. So very curious that Stan Freeberg puts his name in this skit. Okay, that's enough crazy trivia from me for this show. We go into the weeds once in a while with my head full of diverse knowledge that serves no purpose other than to entertain you slightly when I spit it out here. Anyway, um, back on Thursday with more of the top 10 adventure shows and back next Tuesday with more drama, variety, and comedy. Tell your friends, check out the Facebook page, make comments on the Facebook page, ask questions on the Facebook page, and make sure you send uh, one of your friends a link to the show so that they can listen to one of these too. Okay, that's it. Thanks so much, and we'll see you again.